I want to get this one right. The eleventh thesis. The eleventh thesis. The eleventh thesis. It's called Sociologist as Partisan, and I'm afraid it's going to take five minutes. Sorry. <laughs> I have called my last thesis Sociologist as Partisan, and after Alvin, after Alvin Gordon's essay of the same name, my eleventh thesis asserts sociology's special place among the social sciences. If economics has its, as its object the economy and as its value the expansion of the market, and if political science has as its object the state and as its value political stability, then sociology has as its object civil society and as its value the expansion of the social. But what is this civil society? It is a historical product of late 19th century capitalism that produced associations, movements and publics that were outside both state and economy. Political parties, trade unions, schooling, media, voluntary organizations, and so forth. This is the unique standpoint, standpoint of sociology, so that when civil society disappears, so does sociology. Just think of Stalin's Soviet Union, Hitler's Germany, or Pinochet's Chile. And when civil society flourishes, so does sociology. Think of Perestroika Russia, late apartheid South Africa. Sociology may be connected to civil society by an umbilical cord, but of course this is not to say sociology only studies civil society. Far from it. But it studies the state or the economy from the standpoint of civil society. Political sociology, for example, is not the same as political science. It examines the social preconditions of politics and the politicization of the social, just as economic sociology is very different from economics. Indeed, Economic sociology looks at what economics, economists overlook, the social foundations of the market. This tripartite division of the social sciences, and we need to include other social sciences too, was true of their birth in the 19th century, but it became blurred in the 20th century with the fusing and overlapping boundaries of state, economy and society. For the last 30 years, however, this three-way separation has been undergoing a renaissance spearheaded by state unilateralism on the one side and market fundamentalism on the other. Opposition to these twin forces comes, if it comes at all, from civil society, understood in its local, national and transnational expressions. In this sense, sociology's affiliation with civil society, that is, public sociology, represents the interests of humanity, interests in keeping at bay both state despotism and market tyranny. Let me immediately qualify what I've said. First, while I do believe that economics and political science between them have manufactured ideological time bombs that have justified the excesses of markets and states, excesses that are destroying the foundations of the public university as well as so much else, still, while acknowledging this, I would not want to write off all political scientists and economists. <laughs> Disciplines, after all, are fields of power, each with its dominant and oppositional forces. Think of the perestroika movement in political science, or the development of post-autistic economics, <laughs> an economics that recognizes human beings as fully developed actors. <laughs> uh, so, yes, there is, uh, you know, that's post-autistic economics is a real thing. Um, <laughs> as sociologists, we should and do give support to these oppositional formations. But don't get me wrong. Sociology is not all virtue. Far from it. Civil society, after all, is not the same, some harmonious communalism, but it is riven by segregations, dominations, exclusions, and exploitations. It is said that historically civil society is male and white, is invaded and even colonized by state and market. It is very much a contested terrain. Still, but still, I would argue, in the present conjuncture, the best possible terrain for the defense of humanity a defense that would be cultivated by a vibrant public sociology. Wherever I go, I'm told that promoting public sociology will require impossible institutional change. Of course there are institutional obstacles. Public sociology wouldn't be important if there weren't. To surmount them requires commitment, and many have made such commitments, such choice. There's already a plethora of public sociologists, and changes are taking place all the time. There's Context magazine, has taken a major step in the direction of public sociology. And I'd like to congratulate Claude Fisher on what a great job he has done so far. And I look forward to new and enterprising moves on, from Jeff 
Goodwin and Jim Jasper. The ASA, yes, yes, give them a clap too. Get encouragement. The ASA head office has made vigorous efforts in the direction of public sociology and outreach and lobbying, but also in the columns of footnotes. And this year, the ASA has introduced a new award that will recognize excellence in reporting of sociology in the media. We need to build a collaborative relation between sociology and journalism. And details of this award can be found in your brochure and in many other places. We have also set up a task force that will consider three key issues. Except the first one. Okay, well, hmm. the, first, the first task of this task force is to actually validate and to legitimate the existing forms of sociology, to make the invisible visible and the private public. Second, the task force will consider introducing incentives for public sociology, rewarding the pursuit of public sociology. And already, I'm glad to announce that this year, departments have introduced awards for public sociology, have created weblogs for public sociology, and have begun designing courses for public sociology, if they were not already doing it before. Third, if we are going to acknowledge and reward public sociology, then we must develop criteria to distinguish good from bad public sociology. And this is very important. And we must ask who should evaluate public sociology. We must encourage the very best of public sociology, whatever that may be. We must not allow ourselves to be accused of so public sociology as second-rate sociology. In short, we have to think about the legitimation, reward, and evaluation of public sociology. But in the final analysis, the success of this project will not come from above but from below. By public sociology capturing the imagination first of sociologists and then propelling itself forward in a social movement. There are three steps in any social movement. Name it, frame it, and claim it. We have named it, we have framed it, and now the question is whether we can claim it. And one last thing. I've said it before and I'll say it again. We cannot do this ourselves. The world neither ends nor begins at the Rio Grande, at Florida, at California. And as tragically we know it, does not even stop in New York. We live in a connected world and sociology must reflect this. There is a lot of work to be done at home, as we heard from Mary Robinson last night. But it should, not, but it should be done with eyes open, with a global perspective. We need to join hands with others and in as humble a way as we know how. I hope... I hope by now the meaning of our logo is clear. Can we have our logo? There's our logo. You see, these five dancers, they include four sociologists. <laughs> Professional, public, policy, and critical. Through Matisse's eye, you can see their concerted but tense interaction their passionate concentration, as well as their naked resilience. <laughs> From their tortured faces, you can see they could not be professional dancers. <laughs> they could only be sociologists. <laughs> but there is a fifth dancer, a fifth dancer below, whose face we cannot see, who appears to be a stray hanger-on trying to join the party, a dancer who was attracted to the light, who's seen the light, the sociological light. Could it be that wicked economist, <laughs> that wicked economist they call Paul Krugman? <laughs> Whoever it is, we are dancing together around the world, engaging the terrain of a global civil society, joining to uphold the bonds of humanity and to defend the commons.